was wondering how you allow for Botox. Ha! Uh, well, Botox basically uh, disables your facial muscles. And that means that people are simply less expressive. Uh, some studies say that people are more liked by because of that. Don't know. Uh, it, Botox does happen a lot uh, in in the forehead as well, which means that means that people would frown less, and maybe that's why they're perceived as more. So the, the, there's this uh, television program called Lie to Me uh, that is actually based on the systems that we use, and you know the experts that. Uh, inform that program are the experts that we work with actually so they're the, they're the yeah it's real although perhaps a little bit exaggerated yes currently the biggest problems that are still unsolved or that, that we, people still are addressing is still major head pose um, a, a big problem is um, I, I said that we could align the face as in sort of remove rotation um, and that's fine as long as my, my uh, face is sort of frontal, facing the camera, as I am now. Um, it's a bigger problem when I turn away, because if I turn like this, you can't just rotate my face and get an upright version. And this is actually a 3D problem. As long as my, my, my face is a plane in front of the camera, rotating it will not cause any, any 3D distortions. But when I start doing this, you get non-linear transformations. And that would be nice, that would be, still not be a problem if I would know the angle between the camera lens and this plane, if this were a plane. But my face is not a plane, my face is a 3D structure. And we don't know this 3D structure. So even if you were to know my head pose relative to the camera, you could not translate it back to a frontal view unless you know my 3D shape of my face, which is now why things like the Kinect and other 3D consumer uh, sensors are so exciting because they make solutions like that possible. So Kinect and the Intel RealSense sensors are depth sensors that can basically determine not only your 2D picture, your, your RGB picture, but also the depth between, the distance between the camera and the object that it, uh, that it illuminates, because it actually uses laser or structured light to get that uh, depth map. If you have that depth map, you can see all the, the valleys and hills in the face landscape. So all the furrows become very, very clearly visible. And things that stick out, like my nose, are very useful then to see exactly which way I'm pointing at. And that's, uh, so that's, that, that's a very good way of doing it. There's an issue for interpretation of expressions, right? Because what we do is we just see what kind of facial display you're making. You're smiling, but are you smiling because you're happy? Or are you smiling because that's your social convention? Or are you in pain? Funnily enough, when people are in pain, they smile a lot when there's other people around. So the whole point of interpretation is an, another problem. And frankly, we actually don't tend to work too much with that. Um, instead, what we try to do is we actually try to recognize facial muscle actions, or to be perfectly correct, we are trying to recognize the facial appearance changes caused by these facial muscle actions. So I mentioned the or orbicularis oculus, which is uh, the, the muscle around the eyes. And if you contract that, either my eyes close or, or my cheeks raise, the zygomaticus major, is the, 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 the muscle here, and if I contract that, I smile, etc., etc. So this whole, this, these are facial muscle actions, and the nice thing about those is that it's objective. Every human has the same set of muscles, and we can do the same set of actions. We might not all be able to do it on command in the same way, but you can train yourself to do to, 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 to everything, basically. So we're trying to detect these 32 different facial muscle actions, independently of each other and it's like a little facial action coding system and you can combine them into little uh, little groupings of action units and that builds a facial display so you're boiling it down into to some numbers we're boiling it down to a set of numbers a uh, number of atomic uh, units that together code up the the, the face